Eu gostaria de chamar aqui na frente o doutor David Mocker para receber o prêmio das mãos de doutora Pilar Duran. Pilar. O prêmio Eduardo Campos de Ciência, Tecnologia e Inovação. Nosso ex-governador fez muito em Pernambuco, morreu lutando por um ideal fantástico e permanecendo nas lutas. Um, I knew of his work before even coming to University of New England. 
and he had a lot of funding from the National Institutes of Health throughout his career, uh, many millions of uh, U.S. dollars um, to fund his research. Um, physiology from 68 to 77, um, and then from prenatal protein malnutrition, he worked from 1972 until 2010. So what is that? 40 years? Almost 40 years um, that he was working on, on malnutrition. And then also her anatomy of the dolphin for almost uh, 25 years um, that he worked on um, that work. So he was very, very productive. He had over 240 research papers. Um, so um, that was a huge number of papers. Um, given his career of almost 50 years, that's an average of about five papers per year, which is phenomenal. He never stopped working, never stopped thinking about his work. Um, many different reviews, many different chapters. He liked to think big, um, put things in perspective, not only for malnutrition, but the brain in general, um, and always had a, a different thinking of um, his um, way of doing things. So, um, one of his big areas um, that we have, didn't talk about here um, is neuroanatomy of the dolphin brain. Um, he became very interested and became a world expert in the dolphin brain. Um, when he passed away in 2010, uh, because of our work together, I inherited all of his um, research papers, and um, we are now working um, with others um, to try to put together an archive of especially this neuroanatomy of the dolphin brain because it's very rare information. There's very few um, places in the world that are doing research on the dolphin brain. Um, and recently at the University of New England, we had an exhibit of the dolphin brain and a lot of Peter's work. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that right now. Um, this is our exhibit that we had um, that, of Peter's work. Um, many different publications, um, a lot of art. He liked drawings. I showed you drawings yesterday. I'll show you drawings tomorrow um, that he did. Um, and we worked on it together. Um, here he is with a dolphin brain in his hands, um, a young Peter Morgan. And he always liked the art associated with the dolphins. Um, he had um, a lot of different specimens. Um, here is just a whole brain. And then he would take that and he would analyze um, the structure of the brain and he would make drawings to explain how the dolphin brain was organized. And so he would spend a lot of time um, working to, um, with those brains to figure out um, how they may be working. And they're very different brains than ours, obviously. Um, and, but there's parallel evolution uh, from the dolphin and the sea mammals um, into as compared to human brains. Um, now there is a collection at the uh, ICANN School of Medicine in New York City of um, the histology of the dolphin brain. Um, these are uh, the collection here is in the laboratory of Dr. Patrick Hoff, another famous neuroscientist. And each one of these slats here is a tray that has these slices of the brain, these histological slices, and they're large slots. As you might imagine, the brain is very large. So it's a rare, rare collection um, that we're working with um, people to try to get them to be able to use it. Um, he published extensively on the neuroanatomy of the dolphin brain. Um, we have some of the different papers. Um, as I said before, um, he was doing this from the early 70s, um, 60s until um, 2004 um, was his final paper um, on the dolphin brain that they published. He also was um, a, um, one of the early people to start working on um, malnutrition in the brain. Um, he started this work in the 1970s. 
Uh, he was at the Worcester Foundation at that time. He was working on feeding behavior um, and serotonin. And he was approached by the National Institute of Health to specifically develop a program to look at malnutrition. And he worked on that program and developed that program at the Worcester Foundation. Um, and later on, in the 1980s, late 1980s, um, he moved that project in with uh, and, and recruited Janina Gallard, um, who is a, um, a physician, MD, um, psychiatrist, um, who had been working with a human population exposed to malnutrition in Barbados. And she has been continuing to work with those um, people for the last 40 years. Um, so um, early on, um, the papers, um, 1970, um, I think 75 was the very first paper um, that they put out um, looking at malnutrition. Um, and uh, here's some papers, um, early papers with Leon, um, Nucleus um, Locus Aurelius, uh, effects of protein um, deprivation on the graphene nucleus. Um, so they were already focusing in on norepinephrine, serotonin as being important networks to be looking at with malnutrition um, in order to figure out what's going on in the brain. Um, I came along um, in the 1980s, late 1980s, and started working. Actually, interesting enough, I actually published papers with Peter on malnutrition before Janina Gallery started. So I actually go back further than Janina. Um, 1989, I think she was 90s, early 90s. Um, so this is one of our early papers. Um, this is the first paper with Joe Branzino at, um, at Trinity College in Connecticut. He did a lot of electrophysiology. Um, and then this is our latest paper, 2019, Frontiers. Um, and it's, it's hard to see here, um, but the editor um, is one of your local professors. Um, Ruben? Geddes. Geddes. yeah. Ruben Geddes is, he was our editor uh, for this particular paper. Um, and we still have some more papers to publish with Peter's name on it, um, even many years after he has passed away because of the work that we started. We're still working on getting these things done. Um, here's our prenatal protein malnutrition. We had um, Leon and uh, Bilar came to visit us in, in um, New England. Um, and this is a dinner that we had. Um, you can see Peter down here at the end of the table. Here's Doug Rosine. Um, Joe McGahey, you can see a little bit of Pilar's face right there. <laughs> um, Leon, um, way down at the end there. There's Pilar again. Here's Mel. Um, there's Peter Stead right there. So we had a wonderful dinner um, together to celebrate our work together on the malnutrition. Peter was also a philanthropist. Um, he um, he and his wife Cecile traveled around the world, and Cecile passed away in 2001. Um, and in her honor, he gave the University of New England a million dollars, a million US dollars, um, to dedicate the laboratories in the building where we were working to Cecile. Right? And then he went on to give the university another million dollars. U.S. dollars in order to build a science building dedicated just to science for undergraduate students at the University of London. So he gave his money for science because it was so important to him to educate the students in the sciences. He was also a lover of champagne, okay, and wine. Um, and this is a um, bottle. It's hard to see how big this bottle is. But this bottle of champagne is this high. Okay? Um, it's, it's called a 
a Nebuchadnezzar of champagne. And he bought that bottle of champagne in celebration of the opening of the Morgane building. So we had a celebration and he had bought that champagne. A friend of ours built this stand for it that swivels to allow you to pour the champagne from that huge bottle. And this is us um, celebrating. He would have um, at his home in um, in Gettysburg, Port Maine, um, he would have these um, champagne tasting parties where he'd invite 20 people and he'd have 20 bottles of champagne, and all very nice um, um, champagnes, and we would have a celebration of champagne and enjoy each other's company for an evening. Um, so Leon and Peter were great friends, um, great colleagues. They celebrated life together, and they were great neuroscientists. So thank you, Professor.